Praise the Lord, beloved ones. Welcome to Fresh Move of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for watching. Hallelujah. We give God a glory. We give God a praise. Shall we pray? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I bless your name. Take over right now. Move by your mighty spirit. Speak your word to everyone watching and touch lives. I give a praise. I give a glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Once again, I welcome you for joining on. I welcome you for watching. We give God a praise for making it possible for us to share the word again. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And i like to share from verse 18 to verse 20. Powerful, powerful scriptures here. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. This is Apostle Paul speaking his second letter to the church in Corinthians from verse 18. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them and has committed to us the word of reconciliation reconciliation oh hallelujah praise god be reconciled unto god hallelujah the word used here for the reconciliation is greek and uh, from the strongs it's uh it's called catalage and a greek word simply means change or exchange in contest to two parties change in attitude change in behavior towards each other from enmity unto friendship from enmity unto friendship Hallelujah. Beloved, God created us for fellowship. God created us for friendship. God created us for communion. When God created Adam, when God created Adam, Adam and Eve, it was his intention for man, for Adam and Eve to be in a garden so he can communicate with them. So we see in Genesis, it tells us that God walked in a garden in the cool of the day. That was something that he usually did. It was not the first time that God came to see them. He wanted a relationship. He wanted a communion. He wanted fellowship with man. But sin came in. You see, when sin came in, there was a separation. Their friendship was broken. There was, they became enemies. And that situation has existed into, until now. And man now has become enemies with God. But this shouldn't be so because God created us for fellowship to begin with. He created us for himself so we can communicate with him. So he can pour his love on us. So we can pour our love back onto him. The love that he poured in our spirit, we pour it back on him in fellowship, in communion, and in worship. But sin came in. Sin brought separation. And man now became enemies with God. And we see throughout the Bible, God has, seek, has been seeking man to come back. God has been seeking us to come back in fellowship, come back in communion, come back in intimacy. And we see throughout the Bible, God allowed the animal sacrifice to bring man closer to him. But for the blood, the shedding on the blood did not really take away their sins. It covered it up, but it allowed man to get closer to God. For God was looking forward to the main sacrifice. He was looking forward to the ultimate sacrifice through his son, Jesus Christ. So he allowed that. But now, when Jesus Christ came, when the fullness of time came, Jesus Christ came. He came and he took our place. For God had to punish sin. A holy, a thrice holy, and a righteous God had to punish sin. For sin is evil and God hates sin. God had to punish sin. And so Jesus had to pay the price. Someone had to pay the price. There was no one found who could have taken away our sins. For all the blood of you and I has been tainted because we are all from Adam. And all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But Jesus Christ the true son of God, the only son of God, 
the one with the perfect blood, the one with the sinless blood, the one with the spotless blood. He came willingly, willingly. When God could not find no one to take away the sins, he said, here I am, Father, send me, I will go. He willingly came and laid down his life. He had power to lay down his life and power to pick it back up. He came and he laid down his life. He paid a price. He took our shame and took our punishment. He took the wrath that we were supposed to receive. And because that one sacrifice, Father God has accepted that right sacrifice. Jesus Christ's death has satisfied the righteous wrath of God. And so Father God now says, come back into fellowship with me again. Come back into intimacy with me again. Come back into friendship with me again. I have turned my face to you again. The Lord has turned his face towards us and he's waiting for us to come back to him. The Lord, he has forgiven our sins for he has accepted the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The one sacrifice has satisfied the righteous wrath of God. And now he has turned his face towards you. He has turned his face towards me, beloved ones. And he says, come back to me. Let's be friends again. I forgive you, but we must come through the blood of Jesus Christ. You see the verse that we read from verse 18. It says, all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Christ Jesus. He has reconciled to himself through the blood of Jesus. We must come through the blood. We must come through the cross. We must accept the Lord Jesus Christ. We must accept his work. We must accept the finished works of Christ. And then we can come into fellowship with the Lord again. We can come into communion with him again. We will come into intimacy with him again. For the Lord has turned his ways unto us. And he speaks to us tonight saying, be reconciled unto me. Be reconciled unto me. For I have reconciled to you. See, God did not have to reconcile unto us. By the mercies and the grace of God, he has reconciled unto us. And tonight, my brother, my sister, friend, the Lord says, be reconciled unto me. For my son has taken your punishment. My son has taken your death. My son has taken your wrath. Come back into fellowship with me. Come back into friendship with me. And there's a powerful verse in Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5 verse 1. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Romans chapter 5 verse 1. Powerful verse. Jesus is calling us today. The Lord is calling us today. Here again we see Apostle Paul speaking about a sacrifice that Jesus did for us. Romans chapter 5 verse 1. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we are peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Peace with God. Being justified by faith. By the blood of the Lamb, we have been brought back in by the blood of the Lamb. God now can look at sinners, we sinful beings, and declare us righteous because of the work, the work of his son, Jesus Christ. And tonight, he's got his arm open, waiting for us to turn back to him. You see, he has turned his face towards us. And he's waiting for us to turn back onto him. Before, we were facing opposite. But now he turned his face first. And he's waiting for us, men, to turn back to him. And come back into fellowship with him. The Lord is waiting for you today. Would you turn back to him today? Would you face him today? He offers his hand to you. He offers his love to you. He offers his peace, his grace. And he says, come back. I want a fellowship. True fellowship with you. True intimacy for you. For the fullness, the fulfillment of our, our life will be found in a relationship with God. Relationship with Jesus. So many people have reached the pinnacle of life. They have attained the highest achievement in life. But there is no peace. There is no satisfaction. There is an emptiness. There is no joy. Because they are missing their true fulfillment. 
our true fulfillment, beloved, is to be with the one who created us for fellowship. He created us for himself. He created us so we will be in fellowship with him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Tonight, the Lord is calling you tonight. Be reconciled unto me. Be reconciled. Come. Whatever it is. Whatever it is that you are in, just come. I forgive you. Just come. Come. I'll stand my hand. I'm waiting for you to embrace you, to kiss you, to hug you, and welcome you home. Come back home. There's a call for the world to come back to the Lord. And if you're hearing me today, the Lord is calling you. Come back home. Your true home is to be with the Lord. In fellowship with him. Not a physical structure, but a spiritual location. Where your spirit becomes one with the Lord. For he who's joined with the Lord becomes one spirit with him. That is when we find our true fulfillment. Come back home. Would you come back home tonight with the Lord? Come to the Lord. And if you're watching me today, you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. This gift of reconciliation is for you. You do the same thing for you as it did for me. All you have to do is turn to the Lord and give your life to him. And you bring you in into fellowship with him. If you're ready to pray that prayer, if you're ready to surrender your life to him, you are ready to turn your face back to the Lord. I'd like to lead you to him. So you too will receive this gift of reconciliation and be friends again and restore the fellowship that has been broken. If you're ready to pray, if you're ready to give your life away to him, I'd like to pray with you. I'd like to lead you to him. Would you pray this prayer with me? And please repeat after me. Open up your heart to him. He'll fill you with his spirit, his spirit, and use you for his glory. Please repeat this prayer after me. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who came to die in my place, who came to take away my sins, who came to take away my shame, who came to take away my punishment. Today, I give you my life. Come into my heart. Wash me in, my, in your blood. Fill me with your spirit and use me for your glory. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Such a precious moment. Oh, beloved one, if you pray that prayer, I welcome you to the family of God. You now have the gift. You have the gift of reconciliation. You have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you. Begin to read about him. Find a Bible and read about him. Find a Bible-believing, spirit-filled church. A spirit-filled church. A church that is on fire for God. Not a dead church. And find a church that will bring you closer into fellowship with him. And begin to fellowship with him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I'd like to pray for everyone watching. Father, in the name of Jesus, I give you praise for your word. Lord, make yourself real to everyone watching right now. Make yourself real to everyone watching right now. I thank you for the lives of those who have given their life to you. Fill them with your spirit. Draw them closer to you. And use them for your glory. Touch every life represented right now. Whatever they need is. Let your mighty power move right now, Lord. Touch, heal, deliver, save for your glory. I worship you. I thank you for the privilege to preach your word. Oh, I thank you that it will never return void, but it will produce result. For your word is spirit and life. Let it produce result right now, Lord. In the life of the people, in all our lives, we give you glory, we give you honor, in Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen, hallelujah, glory to God, oh hallelujah, well God bless you for watching, I pray this message has blessed you, if it has blessed you, please go ahead and like it, share it, subscribe to the channel, and tell someone about Jesus Christ, tell someone about the free gift of reconciliation and proclaim 
the goodness of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. God bless you for watching. I'll see you next time, my friend. God bless you and keep preaching the good news of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. See you next time, my friend. Jesus loves you and I love you. Bye-bye now.